Of the resurrection of the Lord. I, w- I thought we weren't doing the thing about saying the ending after the gospel. Okay, I'm doing it. Okay, that's fine. A warm welcome to both parishioners and guests to St. Paul's as we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. Please silence all electronics. We will be using the Mass of Wisdom as the Mass setting with the pamphlets that are located in the pews. 
Today's reading can be found on page 1065 in the Gather Hymnal. Please note, everyone should remain standing after the gospel until the Alleluia has concluded. We strongly encourage both parishioners and guests to join us in singing throughout the Mass. Father John is the celebrant for this Mass, assisted by Deacon George. As the ministers process to the altar, let us stand and sing verses 1 and 2 of hymn number 540, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. spirit. And happy Easter to everyone here today. Happy Easter. Thank you. As we begin our celebration, we seek God's mercy in our life. Lord Jesus, you came to call all sinners. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord Jesus, you are sit right hand of the Father to intercede for us. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the heart.
O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. 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 A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God in advance who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one anointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you and with your spirit. a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John Glory to on the first day of the week Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb so she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom <laughs> Jesus loved and told them they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, 
But the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Easter joy. The two words are almost synonymous. The resurrection, new life, hope, all of these are causes for joy. Yet, the first accounts of the resurrection are not of joy, but of bewilderment and confusion and fear. Last night we read Mark's gospel of the resurrection account, and uh, it stopped at verse 7, but there was one more verse after that. And up until verse 7, it said, the women went to the tomb. They saw an angel, a young man sitting there, said, Jesus is risen, go off and tell the disciples. But they didn't include verse 8, which said, and they went out and fled from the tomb for fear and astonishment gripped them, and they told no one anything, for they were afraid. The end of Mark's gospel. That's how it ended his whole gospel. Now, a couple years later, a few years after that, they added an appendix to it because people didn't think this was, uh, you know, maybe a satisfying ending to the gospel, you know? The last word in the gospel, they were afraid. Uh, and they didn't know what to make of it. But I think it causes us to think on this morning, what do we make of the resurrection? And how do we, how do we incorporate it into our lives? How do we bring it to our faith? I saw a movie a couple of like a month or so ago uh, called The Anatomy of the Fall. And it's a French movie. It's really good if you've never seen it. Uh, but it talks about a family, a mother, father, and their 12 or 11-year-old son who's blind. They live in the Alps, beautiful up in the Alps in, in uh, France. And um, the, the son goes out for a walk. When he comes home, he discovers his father dead in front of the chalet. And uh, it looks initially like he fell out of a window, the third floor window. But then as they start to investigate this, they see that that couldn't have happened. So he was either, either committed suicide or he was pushed. And so it goes to trial and, and, his, and his mother is accused of killing her husband. And as they go through the trial, other things become, uh, uh, you know, uh, revealed to this young man, this boy who didn't know about certain things about his parents. And, and he, he has to, he's supposed to testify, and he's in a big dilemma because he doesn't know. He loves both of his parents. He, doesn't, he can't believe his father committed suicide, but he doesn't want to believe that his mother killed his father either. So he's in a dilemma about what to believe after hearing the testimony. And he doesn't know what to do. And, and he talks to his uh, court-appointed guardian about this. And she can, of course, influence one or the other. But she says, you know, she says to him, you know, sometimes life is like that. We just don't have all the facts. Sometimes life is confusing. But we have to make up our minds as to what we believe. And I think in some ways today, that's what these women after the experience at the grave had to do. They had to make up their mind what they believed. John's version is not much dissimilar uh, in that this, what we just heard, Mary Magdalene finds an empty tomb, not knowing what to make of it. She runs and tells Peter and the disciples. Peter gets to the tomb, sees the empty, sees it's empty. 
he doesn't know what to make of it either. Only John, and only in John's gospel, sees the burial cloth basically in a place like where it was supposed to be, like someone almost evaporated out of, the, out of it. And it says he sees and believes. But it doesn't say he was overjoyed. In fact, it says they returned home, probably filled with fear and bewilderment. And we know that when they got home, they locked the door behind them. I think that these initial reactions actually give credence to the resurrection because it is a human reaction to something that they don't know how to deal with or understand. Nothing like this has ever happened before. What's going on here? If Jesus is risen, where is he? And is he angry that they abandoned him? Will there be hell to pay? As the appearances of Jesus unfold over the coming days, we see that Jesus does not come for revenge, but for salvation. And so joy does start to permeate the message, but slowly. This is a lot to comprehend. And while there are appearances of Jesus in Jerusalem, it is the appearances that Jesus has in Galilee where he tells his disciples to go and recorded in Mark, Matthew, and John that really, I think, say what the resurrection is about. He asked his disciples to join him there. I find that interesting. It says that Jesus is saying to them, go home. You will experience me when you are at home, among the familiar, in your daily life. So today, we gather to celebrate this great event of our faith. Hopefully, we are filled with Easter joy, but maybe some of you are filled with questions, with bewilderment or confusion. The resurrection, after all, is based on faith. It takes time and experience to digest. We do have strong eyewitness accounts, but each of us must rely on faith to try to comprehend and embrace this experience in our own lives. So we may encounter the Lord here today in this place, but we're also encouraged to go home and encounter the Lord there in your families today and in your work tomorrow and in your daily routines in your trials and triumphs, in your doubts and bewilderment. The one thing we are called to believe is that Jesus is alive. He's not just a, an historical figure who once lived. He is a presence to be encountered, a person to know and to walk through life with, a promise to share the promise of eternal life. He is alive. Alleluia. Please stand. My brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we've been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. So now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the baptismal promises by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I, I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show. I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, who rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints? the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I do. 
And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in singing hymn number 903, Baptized in Water. of salvation, we have confidence to approach God with the needs of our world. That the Holy Spirit may continue to guide the church as she proclaims the resurrection of Jesus to all the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That national and international leaders may be empowered by the Holy Spirit in serving their people as Christ came to serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer that the hope of the risen Christ may console the troubled, reconcile those who are estranged and alienated, and heal the hurting and suffering among us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the peace of the risen Christ reign among the nations and peoples of the world, leading them to work together to uphold the sacredity and dignity of all men, women, and children, especially in Ukraine, and in the Middle East. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those involved and impacted by the tragic collapse of the Key Bridge, especially the construction workers on site, the seafarers, and all the responders acting with urgency to rescue survivors. Let us join in prayer asking the Lord to grant consolation and strength as we cope with this terrible tragedy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That the joy of the risen Christ may inspire our faith community to proclaim in our work and our worship together the good news of the empty tomb, especially our newly confirmed candidates, Yami, Jocelyn, and Joshua. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the sick, may Jesus, the suffering servant, be their strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the light of the risen Christ may shine on the souls of our deceased relatives and friends, so that they may soon find peace and rest in his loving care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. And bless Clarence Knight, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
God, our Father, hear the prayers we offer today through your risen Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in singing our offertory hymn, number 524. Hallelujah, number one, number 524. my sisters and my brothers that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of the church. church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. And therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, whose wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, with St. Paul and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servants, Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory, glory are yours, yours now and forever. And forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. And now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say, say the word, word and my soul shall be healed. Let us join in singing our communion hymn, number 945. I am the bread of life, number 945.
Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that, renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning and happy Easter. My name is Nancy Hogenbauer, and I am a member of your parish council. Here are their announcements for the weekend. The Poor Box this weekend will support missionaries of charity helping the poor all over the world. The parish office will be closed tomorrow, April 1st, and will reopen on Tuesday, April 2nd. However, due to the office remodeling project, please email the office staff as the phones will not be available. The office staff will be working out of the center throughout Thursday. The Women's Club will host their monthly meeting this Tuesday, April 2nd in Dahoney Hall at 1 p.m. <coughs> All the women of the pastorate are invited. The Pastoral Council is accepting nominations for the next three-year term, 2024 to 2027. Please prayerfully consider whether you or someone you know may be interested in becoming a member of the Council, and please see the bulletin for additional information. I'll be available after mass in, the, mass in the narthex if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. I'd just like to thank uh, Deacon George and Diane and all of the ministers and all of the people who uh, worked so hard to make the, this Holy Week and Easter uh, such a great experience here at St. Paul. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. The Lord be with you. And we your spirit. Bow down for a solemn blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. 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 May he who restores you to eternal life and the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. <laughs> Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us join together in singing verses 1 and 2 of hymn number 574. Crown him with many crowns.